Hello everyone, this is Aurelia at Aurelia's Crafting Ideas. My crafting idea for today is to work with this folding lantern that I found at the Dollar Tree. The supplies you will need is your folding lantern. You will also need a photo frame, one that is see-through, some fairy lights, a Halloween tree, the white skull, the silver skull. I have my photo frame disassembled. Now I was thinking this had a glass insert but it doesn't. It comes with a very thick acetate and this has a this clasp right here attached to the acetate. Now I found out that it goes through the acetate. It is secured with a brad like that. So if you purchase this frame and you want to use it for this project, you'll have to take this piece off. And I just broke the brad off. Now, I it's quite easy to put back together so just slide that back in here and then just snap your frame back together next i want to take out one of these haunted homes and one of the bats and it looks like it's just secured with some double-sided tape so pull that off be very gentle when you pull this off because it does look to be one full sheet let me fiddle with this and I will we'll be right back now once you pull off your art it looks like this you get two images of the haunted house and two images of the bat I'm going to go ahead and separate one haunted house and one bat off I have my bats here really cute and I have my haunted house here also all the ghouls and the goblins are having a party. That is really cute. I like that. Let's take a look what it will look like. So here is the bats. If I put the bats in there, maybe on the on the back side. And then take my haunted house. Can you see it's a bit busy isn't it maybe if I move the bats up like that I have my haunted house cut out so it looks like that now if I move the house further down cute huh and then my bats can go right there now look at that I had to be really creative so my bats did not overlap so I cut around the bats I'm going to use some glossy accent to adhere my art to the plexi
I would like to go ahead and run my light on the back of the frame right here. So I have my fairy light here. It is the orange light on black wire. Let me turn it on. Look at that. I like this. I think it's going to look really good. So I want to go ahead and just hot glue this down. Here is my photo frame art. Look at that. So cute. I have the haunted house and look at all the bats on the top. I like it. I have the lights on the back side. Look at that. I just hot glued that in. And I just have the battery pack on the back. It's You can't see it back there anyways. It just blends right in. Let me put some paper behind it. You see the orange light back there? It's going to look really cute in the dark. I like it. Well, this project turned out well. And I hope you guys like it. Give it a try. Thank you for stopping by. This is Aurelia at Aurelia's Crafting Ideas. And I will see you next time. Hello everyone, this is Aurelia at Aurelia's Crafting Ideas. My idea is to work with this bingo game set that I found at the Dollar Tree. I would like to create a Halloween project with this. The main items that you will need for this project is of course the bingo game set and I have a couple of pinwheels here. I want to take off the petals. So let me see. They're just inserted into the little mechanism there. So let me see if I can pull this off. So just give a tug on the wire itself there you go look at that they just come right off well there's some stubborn ones i have my plier for that there we go so do that to both your pinwheels now you should have two pieces like this Back to the cage. Now I want to see if I can separate this. I want to save this little piece here. I will need that later on on the project. There we go. Look at that. I caught it. I'm going to use my craft knife to see if I can wiggle this apart somehow. I have managed to separate my cage i broke it here and there but like i said it's a cage it'll be okay i have managed to paint on my steel colored chalk paint doing the globby effect my favorite method when i am doing you know, Halloween projects. <laughs> so I have my red and my brown paint mixed. I wanted it to be a bit on the 
dark grungy look is why I'm using red and brown. I could have gone with a lighter color, but I thought this one would be much better. So see, it almost looks brown. And let's try this. And I'm just going to dab a little bit here and there. Especially right here where I broke it. Gotta make sure that part is rusted. Did I get this one? Which one did I break? I don't remember. Yeah, this one right here. Make sure I got the, all the rusty effect on that one. At least in that area anyways. Let me put this aside so it can dry. Take a look at this base. I want Oh look, this is the tray for the numbers. That's cute. Now we can put the cage back on there. It'll work just fine. But what I want to do is raise it. So this is where these pin, uh, pinwheel handles come in. My cage is dry. It is the color of steel and it has rusted parts. Now what I want to do is attach my cage to this the spinning wheel like that. Now for this side it has a little indentation in there I think I'm gonna put a hole in there let me do that there you go and just create a little circle in there there we go then I can yeah there we go see now it flushes against my little wheel and I can go ahead and glue that down now Just like that. And see how my my cage spins. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and paint my post here. I want to paint the knob here and the post. And I'm gonna paint them in the in the steel color. I end up having to hot glue my cage to the bell here <laughs> and I've I was a little impatient for my glue to dry so what I want to do is put some candy corn in here now you can put you don't have to you know use candy corns you can put skulls in there that'll look good too see and you can still spin the cage like that you can have skulls in there you can you can stuff a skeleton in here if you like you know trap him in there <laughs> oh here see there A while back, I made some candy corns. <clears throat> See these? I think they'll make a cute addition to my little project here. I have like a whole bunch here. I've been saving for my project. So what I want to do is I want to dump them in, in here. So I got all these candy corns in here. Now I'm going to take my other half of the cage here and 
put it on here. I want to make sure I have my opening right there. I want to be able to, you know, switch it out later on. I cut some Chanel still. I was thinking that I can just tie it off like this. Okay, now let me show you what I'm doing with this. I hope you'll like it. Here is my display. I have my Halloween Village set up and I put my uh, candy corn cage or a cage full of candy corns right here, right above the village. I think it gives it a really nice touch. What every Halloween village needs. Candy corns. I hope you like my idea. And go ahead and give your village that added touch it needs. Thank you for stopping by. This is Aurelia at Aurelia's Crafting Ideas. And I will see you next time. Hello everyone, this is Aurelia at Aurelia's Crafting Ideas. My crafting idea is to make some Halloween ornaments and I hope that you will join me. For my project, I will be using this towel that I found at the Dollar Tree. Look at that, it has cute little gnomes on there. I have one towel there. I will be also using some batting. I have also recently brought home this one. This one is from Home Goods. It has uh, black, gray, and white with some uh, black metallic threading. It's really cute. You will also need some embellishments. Look at this. I found a jar of buttons from the Dollar Tree. And they got all different colors in there. So cute. I have some ring spiders here. And in one package you get the spiders, you get the bats, and the skulls. Turn it around. There you go. See? And I also have some foam bones. I also have these skulls here. Now these skulls came off the plastic metallic bows. This year they have these skulls attached. So that's where these skulls came from. I also have more skulls and bones. Now these came off the Halloween necklaces. So you get orange, purple, and black skulls and then the bones in the same color also. You will also need some fabric. I have this gray fabric with white polka dots that I'll be using. You don't need that much, probably about the, the fat quarter size. The first thing we want to do is go ahead and cut out your little gnomes. Of course, for this project, you will need your basic tools, you know, your scissors, your glue, hot glue gun, if you prefer, with extra glue sticks. Or if you would like to sew your project, and you'll need your needle and thread. So what I want to do is, I want to pick out the full gnomes, and then just go ahead and cut them out. I'm just going 
around the shape of my gnomes here. This is the last. So this is how many gnomes I end up with. <laughs> it's it's quite a lot from just one towel. It's a really good selection. I'm just going to stack my gnomes so I know which colors I have. There looks to be about five different designs on our gnomes here and I have a really good good amount now so here's my scraps see how some of them are like all the way off like this one here see how that body is missing and then missing the top of the hat so these are savable pieces there really cute see how the hat is sticking out right here you can take this hat and finish off this one here so you know have fun I have my um, fabric here I cut out a piece about 14 maybe 17 approximate now I want to flip this over so I have the inside of my fabric facing up and next I want to take my gnomes my cutout gnomes and I'm just going to lay them down here on my fabric like this. I have managed to do three full rows of gnomes. Look at that. I just adjusted them to fit three rows on my fabric here. Let me move this aside for a minute. I want to go ahead and trim my twine now. I have my twine here. I think we will go with this size here so let me measure this so it is six inches so we want to go ahead and cut a plenty of six inch twine well in my case it will be around 24 so yeah it's very easily cut just measure your first one cut it and then just use that as a guide half down hold it there with your scissor half it cut and on just do that till you have the number of hangers you need I will be using my glue gun today so I want to take my string you know fold it in half and I want to put a dab of glue on my fa uh, gnome fabric and then and place my string right in the glue like that and you do that to all your gnomes that's good now now I'm gonna take my glue gun and I want to leave the bottom half of my gnome open here. I'm going to run a bead of glue all the way around the edge of my gnome. Now this glue gun will also help with your uh, fabric from not fraying and then just place it back down like that. Once we've done to all of, all of our fabric, then we'll go ahead and just cut out this gnome here. Just go ahead and cut around the shape of your gnome. Just like this. Let's 
see cute how huh? see how the back end your back end is now finished and then the front isn't that cute once you have finished gluing your fabric together like this you can trim it down if you like if you have extra fabric sticking out after you've done this you want to take some batting and I like to refluff my and then just take a little bit you don't need that much at all just a little bit open it on the bottom where we left it open and then go ahead and uh, stuff your batting in here make sure to push your batting all the way to the the tip there just like that you see there we got a little bit of a puffy effect there and once you've done that stuff the rest in there and then go ahead and close the edge and just run a bead of hot glue right there and then I forgot to put my protectors on just hold that together there we go that is way cute no ornament look at that so go ahead and finish putting some batting in your ornaments so now is a good time to go to YouTube go to Aurelia's crafting ideas and catch up on all the ideas you have missed or have yet to watch see like that run it on the back of the fabric did you see that look at this I you can make little picks too or your garden your any decoration <laughs> I discovered this by accident just now look at that it'll make a nice pick minus the string of course look at this all these gnomes and from the Dollar Tree town no less look at that it is so cute I love the gnomes okay so I recounted I have 23 gnomes oh amazing okay now to embellish so I have my five patterns here and I think that you can probably put a button right there. So give this one a skull to hold like that oh how exciting okay and we get my glue gun and attach some of these I also have some glitter that I found at the Dollar Tree. Look at this. I have the iridescent glitter. I think I want to put some of this 
on the beards. That'll be cute, huh? Just kind of like sprinkle it like that. to reposition the skull there we go and then I am going to go ahead and decorate the rest of my ornaments here are my gnome ornaments look at this Halloween gnome ornaments just for me <laughs> I love them they turned out really really cute let me give you a closer look on some of them. Look at that. Cute. I put glitter on the dots on the hat and gave him a key. And then on this one, I put the button there and then I put a little bat right on top of the button. And then there's this one here. I put a little string on the skull so it looks like he's holding a skull on this one. And then, of course, I glittered all the beards. You don't have to glitter yours if you don't like. It's all up to you. You can put um, some fluffies there if you like. And then I found some spiders in my supply box. Here we go. Look at this one. Gave him a little jack-o'-lantern down there. Cute. And then I found um, a seashell button on there. Put a bat on there. That's cute, huh? I like that. And then, let's see. I found a, a broom. So I gave this one a broom. Look at this. Just adorableness. <laughs> I hope I was able to give you some ideas on what to do with your Dollar Tree towels. Look. Create some gnome ornaments. <laughs> They're so adorable. Well, you know, you can use these ornaments on your trees, on your Halloween trees, on your garland. You can use it as a hair, like a little adornment on a lantern. You know, so many possibilities. Cute. You can even put them in a wreath. Um, I would just leave the loop off and then decorate your wreath with them. Anyways, <laughs> all sorts of things you can do with it. <laughs> you can just leave it on the table like this and enjoy it while you eat breakfast. <laughs> well, have fun. <laughs> Thank you for stopping by. This is Aurelia at Aurelia's Crafting Ideas, and I will see you next time.